My name is Amanda Kimball, and this is my Practicum 1 project for my master's degree from Regis University. The purpose of the project was to create an image classification model for hummingbird species and gender from a camera set up at my hummingbird feeders. This was the initial project plan with one change. I initially wanted to break the birds into male and female classes, but ended up doing a binary bird, no bird detection algorithm instead. All the tasks are complete at this time, although I do hope to add more species and improve my detection setup after this curriculum is complete. As a student researcher for the Audubon Society in the 1990s, I was made aware of how destructive we can unknowingly be to these birds through dispersion of pesticides and other means. By tracking the animals in the country each year, ornithologists have a means to determine when changes in our ecology have impacted the birds. These birds contribute directly to the pollinization and dispersion of plants and flowers throughout the world. And this is why hummingbird classification is important to the ecology as, as a whole. In the past, the easiest way to classify a bird was to catch it and determine its type, which can be detrimental to the survival of the animal. The advent of photography and HD recordings has replaced that process in some areas. And I think that we can do even better with image detection technology available, which will give us an even better understanding of the migration patterns of these birds. Like most bird species, tail feather plumage is an important feature. When two hummingbirds meet on the feeder, they will both display their tail feathers in a contest of sorts to determine who is friend, foe, or most dominant. And as shown in the table, the only way to discern species or gender is to get a good look at those tail feathers and or the throat. The broad-tailed male shown at right is obvious with his rose-red throat, but might be confused with a black chunned hummingbird when his tail is tucked and his rose throat is not shining. The rufous female at the bottom right can easily be mistaken for a broad tailed if her neck is not visible and her tail is tucked. The broad tail female shown at right top of the slide could be of rufous except for this little bit of green between the brown and black of her tail feathers. For this project, I was able to use my existing game camera normally set to take photos. I set it to take 10 second videos whenever motion activated. This collected roughly a thousand videos per week for me to dig through and evaluate. And for the most part, a thousand videos would equate to, ten to tens of hundreds of actual bird shots. With this overwhelming amount of data, I needed to use my data science skill set to partition the data into a more accept acceptable size. I turned to computer vision, or OpenCV, to evaluate each of the videos. I was able to find a motion detection process through an online tutorial, and I modified that code to suit my needs for hummingbird detection. You can review those details in my humming bird detector Jupyter note notebook found on my GitHub page. Here's how the motion detection works. The first gray image shown at left is compared to subsequent gray images to create a differential and this is then enhanced and displayed at right. The bright sections within the video are areas of motion. Let's see what this motion contours look like next to the original video. You see the bird fly out, you see the bird fly in, and there's her friend. The next step in the OpenZV code 
I used takes a snapshot square around the larger contours. It ignores the smaller specks that are not likely to be birds. Uh, you can see those here. Again here, where the bottom of the slide is bright, specks, but there's no square there. At this point, each of those videos could create hundreds of images. So I effectively had increased my data size rather than decreasing the data size. So to classify the videos, I initially had to create a binary bird detection and model and use it to sort the videos and later the images. The binary classification model notebook is also on my GitHub page as bird detection model. Once I had an established set of images, I classified them by species, gender, and uploaded them to my Kaggle dataset. You can see above an example of some broad-tailed images. I attempted to delete images like that at the left that has a tail feather of some sort. And those at the right, I would actually crop um, such that the bird was fully within the frame like the photo shown in the center. After my data set was uploaded to Kaggle, I was able to create a classification model. And here's the result. In the left video, you will see each of the images that the classification model is reviewing. And in the right, you will see which, which images are determined to be birds and how those birds are classified. The model is using transfer learning from the mobile nets uh, convolution network neural network model available through the Keras TensorFlow applications. The 10 second video we have been watching, which is run at halftime, so it takes 20 seconds, is showing two broad tailed female hummingbirds. The model frequently misclassified those images. I used the SK Learns confusion matrix model and plotted the confusion matrix for both the test data right and all images in the Kaggle dataset left. What it shows is that the female broad tails are classified the least accurately. The broad tail male and my elusive Rufus hummingbird are accurately classified. I say elusive because I only have found four videos that I confirmed are the Rufus female. Let's see what happens when a broad tail male hummer shows up at my feeder. Apparently, occasionally you get a female, but for the most part, he is classified as a male broad tail. As you have also seen, sometimes a non-bird photos are classified as birds. This is also true in the model training as shown in the confusion matrix. Um, you can also get a hold of the code to make a confusion matrix by going to my Kaggle kernel for this project. If you look under version 11 at the bottom, you'll find uh, the code to make a confusion matrix. Note that the current pinned version is 10. Let's see what happens when the uh, Rufus comes through here. I'll let this go through a couple times. This is the only new video since I put up my data set that I have found for the Rufus female. Uh, she is 
classified once she comes into frame correctly by the model. One last video. One of the issues I had with getting good accuracy with the model had to do with brightness. I evaluated several data augmentation options and adding brightness level between 0.5 and 1.5 increased my accuracy by about 2%. Since the video's brightness does vary significantly, this seems like a good way to capture those low light birds. I do not know what type of bird is in the video at the beginning. Uh, she is female, she has a very light colored chin. The second bird is a male broad tail. Overall, I'm happy with the model's ability to differentiate between the two birds' genders, given the quality of the data presented to the model. Overall, this project was successful at creating a hummingbird classification model. I would like to add additional data sets as more birds visit my feeders, or perhaps I'll visit areas with other varieties. I also want to optimize my model to improve classification and decrease false positives. Finally, I need to create a direct feed to a computer, perhaps using a Raspberry Pi or other means. Um, to, to bypass the motion detection of the game cam and only collect the hummingbird data. Ideally, the computer would record a daily or possibly weekly report of types of birds identified with an image of each bird for verification purposes. These are the various resources and references that I have uh, acknowledged throughout the, the video. Um, I did want to acknowledge and thank my friends for allowing me to set my hummingbird feeder up at their mountain home. Brian and Denise Wood, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll leave you with a few more bird videos. I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I do. Thank <laughs> you.